Good evening, guys. How are you? 4.30 and a lot of speeches today, right? I've already witnessed four, and I think the quality has only gone up. Very difficult for me to keep pace. And the topic that we have um, is about idea, and I think, uh, I think Stephen did that, and, and I think Terence also talked about India. So today, there is no play better than India. So anything about ideas, and then that's moving into impact, without an India in between, did not make sense to us, right? Now, take back about five years or seven years when I was um, shopping in the US. Uh, a couple wanting to come to India, and you know, uh, people coming from uh, overseas are always uh, wanting to shop gifts to their uh, families. So this lady is uh, buying a shirt for her husband, uh, sorry, for her brother, and um, she picks it up, and it says, made in India. She puts it back. So obviously made in India was not a great option to bring as a gift to somebody in India if you're, going, if you're coming from the US. Picks up another shirt, very floral prints and that kind, and it says made in Guatemala. How many of you have heard of Guatemala? Right, that's probably 15 million people, maybe a GDP of 65 million. But that was very impressive because Guatemala sounded cool. Right? You could bring that as a gift. Take that out to all of the stuff that we're talking about with make it in, in make in India and all that. So all of you start stop eating Maggie, right? You stopped eating Maggie and you're all eating Patanjali noodles. So that's where we are. We're moving to idea, and I think that's where, that's really the message. So anything that's happening today in India has to have some tech around it. You want to do something in education? It's edu tech. You want to do something in healthcare? It's health tech, right? Travel tech, transportation tech. I mean, the ease have given to the tech. Having said that, that is where the impact really is according to me. There's plenty others that you can probably add to that list, but the impact that's really coming in terms of the Indian wheel for impact, that's where I think there is a lot of uh, opportunity that's coming in. Um, I don't know if you guys at the, at the end can see this. I want to talk to you about this little story about the trench digger. This was man, probably in his uh, late 30s, um, a migrant worker from Tamil Nadu. He started digging a trench in front of my house. Started about 9.30, it was a Saturday, I was at home. And about 10.30, his wife joined him, along with his son, 15 minutes later. So the, the family is now starting digging the trench, the man digs, and the wife helps uh, clear the debris. All good, no problem. I run out, I come, walk out at one o'clock to run an errand, and this family's taken a break. They've dug about, uh, 10 feet in um, width and about 4 feet in, so about 40 square feet of digging. And uh, they've settled down for lunch in front of my house. The woman opens a, a meal box. It's got probably rice that's good enough for half a meal for one person. And uh, a very liquidy soup to go with that, something like a rasam maybe. So the three of them are in front of my house sharing a meal in much like most families, parents are telling the son to go ahead and have the bigger share of the meal. That would probably not even be good for one person, right? Of course, I bought, I bought them a meal uh, and got them to uh, buy one for all three of them. Juxtapose that with the Odisha man that was going viral, I like to use that word, about a month, a month and a half ago, when this man was carrying his dead wife for 10 kilometers along with his daughter, only because there was no possibility to get an ambulance. Right? And then the farmers, I mean, there are plenty of such things, there are 3,500 farmers, 
who have uh, ended their lives only in the state of Maharashtra. What does that mean? It means that, I'm not trying to tell you a heart-wrenching story, there's a lot of heart-wrenching stories out there. What it means is that this is the time and place for us to look at these as opportunities. These are the things that are happening. Of course, great to hear, I mean, the, the kind of achievements that some of them have gotten to do this morning. But these are the opportunities for all of us to bring in technology in some form to sort of alleviate the issues that are there around it. So not even lock into them as issues, but more of them, more as opportunities for us to really look at each of these potential items to sort of uh, make a play, right? And that's where the potential for creating an idea that goes into make an impact. So what is it that, that gets into this? So to me, I've, I've, been, I've been on this uh, with, a, with a fairly large corporate life, uh, then going on to doing my startup, a couple of them in the past, and, and running Educate since 2003. And there are a lot of ideas that people come in. Uh, the one with the exclamation mark is really the one that stands out and make an impact. But having said that, all of them can actually be what I call as the guiding sets for us to um, uh, bucket them in. So whether it's, you want to take anything that, we talked about education, we talked about healthcare, it's all about access, the availability of something like that, the affordability. There's an issue with accountability to a large extent and to big criteria is accuracy as well. I mean, you take any opportunity that is there in India, you can probably think of how you can bucket them into one of these, right? Even infrastructure, it would be about accountability. It's, uh, uh, if you're talking about, like I said, education, all four of them would probably come into that. So that's exactly what uh, we're trying to do at Surgery Exchange. Uh, that's a platform where um, we're helping people meet all of these things through remote healthcare, to getting the right access for healthcare, and, and to also make sure that they have the right uh, kind of treatments that they're getting. And that with all the things that are going on in the healthcare business, it's absolutely necessary that we also uh, get down to doing the right accurate methods that come into doing it. Um, so I think so, so before I get here, uh, the, on, the, on the educate side too, I mean, there is a, there is a, there's plenty that um, becomes very um, interesting. So, they appear, so what we're doing with the educate thing is helping again, the same four buckets, we're helping with education access, we're helping people um, go on to uh, get the right kind of uh, opportunities from getting into the right schools. We're also helping people with infrastructure, schools with infrastructure, right? Um, yeah, so um, when you do, it's with the same four things that we're talking about, uh, when it comes to um, the, the uh, educate uh, situation, is, is it really working for you? Have you been able to get down to doing things that are um, in the four brackets? When a girl comes down, probably 10 year old, she comes in, holds your hand, after we've done all of the infrastructure, built stuff that the school needs, she comes in, holds your hand and says, thank you very much, without you I wouldn't have had water, or I would have, without you I wouldn't have had the ability to go to the uh, bathroom. I think that's where it's really working for us, right? Um, so, so going forward, what is it that, uh, so you look at this as an idea. I'd like to leave you guys with an idea at the end of the day, which is what we're looking to work on. I mean, there are 35 lakh registered NGOs in the country. Can we believe that? There are 35 lakh registered NGOs in the country. Well, that means that there's one NGO for every four or 500 people in India. And where is the impact of the four or 500 people, that, that, of the, that many NGOs that are there, right? Um, Apparently about 50,000 crores of international funds have come into the NGO, NGOs in India. Have they made a difference to these 400 people? Is it tangible? Is it available as data? Perhaps not, I mean, I mean and also include the kind of money that we're all raising in NGOs for the, in the Indian situation. So that's, that's probably 
taking it to a much, much higher level than the uh, 50,000 crores that we're talking about. Why is this happening? It's happening for two reasons. Because I think all of us want to fly our own flags. As I run an NGO, I can tell you that I would like to want to do something in the education space, and I'm flying my own flag, and I'm constantly in inventing the wheel. Whereas there's another uh, NGO in the same domain doing the similar stuff, but we're not collaborating. All of the stuff, the money that comes in is going into the research and that kind of stuff into doing the same things that several others have done in the past. Why would we want to do that? It's a huge waste in terms of drain of resources. It's also a huge waste in terms of getting the money, not getting any kind of impact at the, and all of us are doing something, of course, but can we getting the scale in terms of impact? So what, I, what is the idea all about? As you're doing those commercial projects uh, with surgery exchange or with uh, getting into this. So the idea is to create what I think is a one NGO. So the NGO is a platform that we'd like to create as we go forward and help all of the NGOs to come in and collaborate in a form that makes it extremely possible to do in batches, do it together, do it for the same cause. Well, after all, we're all working at the same, on the same cause. If we look in the education space, you're, you have the same objects, it's, forget similar objects. It's, we're all working on learning outcomes, we're all lucky working on um, uh, wanting to make uh, education better for somebody, better quality of education, whatever, whatever are your objectives, I think they're more or less the same, not just similar. So it's absolutely possible for NGOs to come together. Um, so how would you want to do this? You want to do that by bringing it, making it small, put all the right steps that are um, measurable, marketable, doable in a small town or a village. And as you go on to do that, you'd be able to create, according to me, a mechanism that uh, gets people together. Is this possible? Is it even possible in a place like India where people have different objectives? Absolutely. You know, a town like in Chen a place in Chennai called Villivakam has already done something like that. They've got 10 NGOs together and have all worked on the same cause and the scale at which they've delivered is several times better. All right? So that's really what I think as, a, as an idea I'd like to leave behind. And one C, uh, so it'd be a portal that you'd build, get NGOs together, collaborate, make sure that you have a larger impact on uh, the things that you do. And as we go along, I think it will become a moment. Thank you very much.